What is going on, Hive Warriors? So I get this question all the time, and people re-up this question all the time because they want to know what the current studies are telling us. So basically, which intermittent fasting system can net you the best overall fat loss? And I think that the studies are the most important uh, to, to tackle this question uh, because people are going to talk about their personal experience, which may not be biologically connected to what, what could happen with you. Your metabolism might be slightly different to someone else's. Somebody might be able to fast for 20 hours or, you know, a day, right? 24 hours or 48 hours and be okay while for you 16 hours can max you out until you start burning muscle or burning a good amount of lean mass so everyone is different the best thing to look at is something that uh, encompasses as many people as possible that's why studies are very important and not just personal experience personal experience can give you a guide and also can give you knowledge to what your how your body reacts to different intermittent fasting systems but doesn't be but it isn't necessarily representative of what you can tell everyone else to do that's why i always prefer to look at studies because it is technically the most responsible way to deliver a message to the to the vast majority of people meta-analysis are super important we're going to look at a meta-analysis meta that had other different uh, intermittent fasting systems in there in comparison to caloric restriction and we're going to look at which one did the best for fat loss thus using this meta-analysis it's, it's better it's easier to discern which one the majority of people should do so that they can get the best possible results Let's go ahead and take a look at it real quick. Okay, so this is an intermittent fasting versus continuous caloric restriction um, in, uh, meta analysis, which is super, super powerful. Uh, this looked at multiple different studies. This was done in 2022. There is another meta analysis that we have. A new one that was done in 2023 i believe april of 2023 however that one is only looking at weight loss and it's not looking at uh, anything that represents fat loss remember intermittent fasting and calorie restriction only intermittent fasting versus calorie restriction only it's not going to significantly change the weight loss itself because the calorie deficit is what creates the weight loss however Calorie partitioning is a completely different thing. What goes on in terms of what your body is burning uh, to provide you that weight loss, that's a different thing. And uh, intermittent fasting has been shown to be more potent at tackling fat loss. So I'm not going to grab a intermittent fasting meta-analysis study that's not looking at fat loss and only looking at weight loss. This one isn't necessarily looking at fat loss. I would prefer that they directly look at it. Uh, but what they are looking at is not just the weight loss, but also the waist circumference, which can give us a general understanding of possible fat loss as waist circumference uh, that, that normally is uh, derives from body fat buildup and body fat loss, where you see a difference there. And we see that here in this meta-analysis, which takes a bunch of different studies and put them through a filter. So it ended up selecting 11 different studies. And with the 11 different studies, they ensured that, which, which had about 700 and something people in it, they ensured that they looked at overweight individuals based on BMI, which is pretty important because if you're trying to lose weight and you're overweight, it's good to have a subject that is also overweight because it's more representative of uh, the possibility of what would happen with you metabolically. All right. So here's here's the quick breakdown and we're going to look at it right away. All right. So let's take a look at this here. Uh, the Conley, uh, Conley. Uh, and sand for are two are the five two diet. These are five two diets here. Uh, Pavaresh and Maruf are alternate day fasting diet. The only one that are that is a, a intermittent fasting time restricted eating, which is the 16 hours or 20 hours uh, or 18 hours is the Shubal. 
Now, these are the lead uh, researchers that ran the studies. And because this is a meta-analysis, it's taking into account all these different studies. If you look, this is this center point is the likely position in terms of the average. Uh, but then there's obviously a potential for it to go as far as here and as far as here. This line is the cutoff line in terms of this side being caloric continuous energy restriction and this side being intermittent fasting so if wherever it's leaning towards right if it's leaning further towards this way that means that there's a greater uh, uh there's greater uh, waist circumference reduction uh it, with the intermittent fasting group and basically both uh, all all of these conley sunfor shubel and pavarish other than marufi which is an alternate day fasting intermittent fasting uh, study um they all show a positive leaning towards uh intermittent fasting for waist circumference reduction even if weight loss isn't different that's important so you'll see it all here but the strongest one is shubel at two of, that happened in 2018 with the intermittent fasting group now this is a really potent randomized control trial these are all randomized control trials and you still see that this one is the stronger one where it's less possible to move to the right or across the line and is more likely to be on this side aggressively although conley is also aggressively on this side it's also aggressively on the other side so it's very hard it's much harder for you to discern how accurate this is because the the spread is so wide in terms of what can happen while with shoebell it is very comfortably more it's much more comfortably on the side of positively leaning towards intermittent fasting having greater uh, waist circumference reduction of all of these this is the only one that's actually just time restricted eating you can see that there's a lot this one is a de decent this send for is a five is the five two diet it's decent in comparison to to uh time restricted eating is very close actually but the 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 average where it lands it's is much deeper in towards the left side uh which gives it the edge um and their line the line for, goes further in to the left side as well so the most efficient one of all of these here is the shubel study and this is what we see across the board i'm showing you an example of a meta-analysis because it's taking all like so many different studies uh, that were that went through, you know, a, 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 they, they synthesized that data and they they ensured to select the most powerful potent studies. So this is showing the effects of intermittent fasting when it's a powerful potent study in comparison to other powerful potent studies uh, uh, using alternate day fasting or modified alternate day fasting actually a lot of these are modified alternate day fasting they're not full uh alternate day fasting uh where you don't eat at all they're reduced calories uh for for days where where you're not uh where you're fasting so this is basically what we consistently see across the board we're constantly seeing um the time restricted feeding doing better and one of the reasons why it's the likelihood that the time restricted feeding ends up doing a little bit better than you know alternate day fasting fasting for such a long period of time or maybe even the five two is probably because of the consistency of eating every day being able to eat every day which can help lend to muscle retention and remember muscle retention is the biggest flaw of intermittent fasting because although it's not uh completely you know kate craters intermittent fasting or completely crashes it down um it, it does create a, a system where you're not as optimal right because if you're just doing caloric restriction then you have the option to consistently eat protein, which is a pillar of protein synthesis, constant uh, uh, or meal frequency, high meal frequency is a, uh, you know, a, uh, a pillar of protein synthesis that allows you for that allows for you to have that pillar attached while intermittent fasting. Unfortunately, because you're literally fasting for certain periods of time, you are removing that meal frequency. 
uh, the calorie control is there. The protein intake that you can have is there. Uh, but because you're eating every single day, you get to at least create some level of a higher meal frequency than somebody who's doing 5-2, for example, where there's two days where you just don't eat at all, or alternate day fasting, where there's one day where you don't eat at all, um, as you are doing, you know, as you eat one day, you don't the next, eat one day, you don't the next. Um, I think the balance of eating and not eating, but also fasting within each day, intraday fasting, which allows you to have intraday eating. So, because you're doing a 16 hour fast, you get to eat every day because you're doing a 25, 20 hour fast. You get to eat every day, an 18 hour fast. You get to eat every day that creates some sort of a pseudo meal frequency within the realm of intermittent fasting, which puts you closer to the middle where you are getting enough meal frequency to be as optimal as possible within the intermittent fasting realm. And then you're also getting the, those fasting hours that are allowing you to, to uh, tackle body fat. As we see here, waist circumference is tackled with intermittent fasting. Um, and, and if we look at the meta-analysis, just to look at the meta-analysis real quickly, as you can see here, they've stated the significance of body weight changes was more significant after intermittent fasting than calorie uh, than continuous calorie restriction there was no significant difference in bmi between if and calorie uh, continuous calorie restriction these findings suggest that if may be superior to continuous calorie restriction for weight loss in some respects so weight loss is pretty similar bmi is kind of similar too but something is different what's the different thing it's always the same thing muscle might be a little bit less with the intermittent fasting group but body fat is less with the intermittent fasting group you can see here it states there was a significant difference between if uh and ccr uh for waist circumference uh with intermittent fasting having a better waist circumference and this being the uh the chart right here that we just looked at right here conley sanford shubel Paverish, Pever and marufi <clears throat> which with this being the average this line right here being the average so basically you have to understand that not it's not going to be a one size fit all because you can see even through through here through these you know dots here and lines that there's variations, right? You could be all the way over here, or you could be all the way over here with this being where where the, the target is, right? But you could extend this way or that way. Now, it's not perfect. Um, it's not for everyone. But if you, if you were to select what is the most likely thing to happen to you without understanding your own biology metabolically or understanding how you are metabolically yet, and you're just trying to get your your foot in the door or start the process or restart the process without much knowledge of what works for you this is a good indicator to tell you where to lean towards to test uh for uh to see what works for you what has worked for most people um and that's why i pull up these these studies here but yeah it's still uh time restricted eating it's still intermittent fasting and tends to be also early time restricted eating uh, because of the circadian rhythm and how that works, how you burn more uh, earlier rather than later. So when you're eating, if you're eating earlier, you're burning more. But remember, time restricted re eating is is a window that's as long as that can can that can be within eight, seven o'clock, something from as early as seven o'clock in the morning to something as late as four thirty to five p.m. in the afternoon. Don't think of it as just eating in the morning. It also encompasses a, a good bit of the afternoon as well. Uh, so hopefully this video has helped you guys. Yes, time restricted eating, the 16 hours of fasting or 18 hours of fasting or 20 hours of fasting, those are still the best methods to choose in terms of the best results that we've seen. Uh, but there are other method methods as well. And you always have to make sure you are looking at what works for you specifically. These are studies that are just showing the broader aspect of having a large group of people and what works for them. What's the more likely thing to work for them? 
but you always have to know uh, what works for you specifically. Hopefully this helped you, gu helps guide you into where to start or where to restart uh, when doing intermittent fasting. All right, until the next one, guys. Hopefully this helped. Peace out.